Like the disc brake, the drum brake has two brake shoes and a piston. But the drum brake also has an adjuster mechanism, an emergency brake mechanism, and several springs. When the brake pedal is depressed, the piston pushes the brake shoes against the drum. Because the wedging action creates extra braking force, drum brakes can use a smaller piston than disc brakes need. However, the same wedging action means that the shoes must be pulled away from the drum whenever the brakes are released. Some of the springs are used to return the shoes to their neutral position, while others help hold the brake shoes in place and return the adjuster arm after it actuates. This is an example of the rear drum brake system. On this vehicle, there's not a lot of miles on the, on the truck, so chances are the brakes are going to be like new. What I want to do first is go ahead and remove the drum. Now on your vehicle, this procedure may be a little bit different. You want to consult your manual to see how the drum comes off. On our truck here, what we need to do is remove both of the clips. Now the reason the clips are on here is during the assembly process of the truck, it stops the drum from coming off the truck. So I want to go ahead and just remove the clips. We're not even going to reuse them. And also on this one, it has two puller holes made into the drum. It's two threaded holes. You just take two bolts, put them in there, tighten the bolts up, and as you tighten them, the drum will come off. Let's go ahead and remove the drum. When you tighten the bolts to remove the drum, you just want to alternate from one bolt to the next so you don't take a chance of warping the drum. There we are. Now we can go ahead and pull the drum off. This is our drum brake assembly on this vehicle. And if you look at this, compared to our disc brake system, we have two brake shoes. You can see them on both sides here. Now something else too, a lot of vehicles will have what's called a primary shoe. It will be a shorter lining material that will be on the front and will have a secondary shoe on the rear. On our vehicle they're both the same size. Something else too, we have a lot of brake dust here. This would be a good time if you're going to service the brakes to go ahead and put a dust mask on to protect yourself from that. If you look at this, our brakes are like new. This does, like I said, doesn't have a lot of miles on it. There is a unique procedure for taking any drum brake apart. And a good rule of thumb is only do one side at a time. That way you can use the other side as a guide. The exception to that would be is if the brakes were installed incorrectly and then you'd want to refer back to your repair manual. But if you were able to get a lot of miles out of your brake system, chances are they're on correct. So do one side at a time so that way if you lose track of where you're at, you can go over and refer to the other side. Now if you look at this, the hold down on our truck, it's like one long continuous spring. That's actually what's holding the brake shoes in place you'd want to remove the spring. Also, we have a self-adjuster assembly right in here. As you drive the vehicle, the brakes will automatically adjust. And when you service the brakes, this is also something you want to take a look at to make sure the self-adjuster rotates freely. If, and also, that'd be another place that you would grease. In order to replace these brakes, we would remove the spring. Our brake shoes would come off, and we would go ahead and remove our self-adjuster. And also, the parking brake is part of this assembly. We have a parking brake lever in here. The wheel cylinder is going to be the hydraulic portion of the brake that's connected to our brake pedal. But in case of a hydraulic failure, the parking brake's mechanical. As you depress the parking brake pedal, the shoes will expand and come out and touch the drum. That'll help stop the vehicle. Also, for parking the vehicle, if you have a manual transmission vehicle or if you have it on a steep incline, the same as on our disc brakes, this would apply the parking brake. Now, some of the tools that you'll need to do a job like this, there's various spring pliers such as these. And then we also have a brake spoon or an adjusting tool to adjust the rear brakes. It just depends on your application, and if you're not sure, you can check with the professionals at AutoZone. They can tell you what tools you'll need. Whenever you're inspecting the rear brakes, you want to check the condition of the lining on the brake shoes. If you're looking for any kind of cracks, if this would be a riveted style shoe, this is a bonded shoe, but on a riveted style shoe, you'd see rivets throughout the shoe area. You want to make sure that the rivets aren't metal to metal to the brake drum. So you want to check the overall condition, also the thickness. This is about the original thickness of these brake shoes on your vehicle. They might even be twice as thick as these. You just want to check the overall condition. You also want to check around the wheel cylinder to make sure you don't have any brake fluid leakage. If you do, then the wheel cylinder is going to have to be serviced or replaced. 
One last thing you want to check for while you're in here is check see if there's any obvious grease. This being a rear wheel drive vehicle, there's a grease seal for the axle. If that seal would fail, grease would uh, cover the brake system. So not only would you have to replace the brakes, you'd want to replace that seal or you have a repeat problem. We want to also inspect the drum. What you want to look for are any cracks in the drum surface and also if there's any hot spots, it'll be like a bluish spot. There might be grooves in it. If any of those conditions exist, you'll either have to replace the drum or have it serviced. Ours is in good shape. There's different designs for different vehicles. Just re refer to your repair manual, but just take your time. With the right tools and the right parts, they're not that complicated. Let's go ahead and put the drum back on. As with any job, to do it right, you'll need the right tools. The nice thing is that jobs today don't require a large, expensive assortment. Basic hand tools are generally all you'll need. In case where a specialty tool is required, be sure to check with AutoZone's Loan a Tool program. They have many specialty tools that can help you complete your job a lot quicker and easier. The first things you'll need are a socket set, brake line wrench, drop light, and a repair manual for your specific vehicle. You may also need screwdrivers or pliers to remove some components. A torque wrench is necessary for tightening nuts and bolts to the correct specifications. When lifting a vehicle, never work under it until it has been secured with wheel blocks and securely positioned on jack stands. A hydraulic jack alone is never enough. Be cautious when working with oils and chemicals. Many are damaging to the groundwater environment and toxic to people and animals. Never drain or pour chemicals into the ground or sewer systems. Local municipalities and counties offer resources for proper disposal. And always remember to wear your safety glasses. Get the entire DVD for this repair and all other procedures covered in the Complete Car Care Series at your local AutoZone store.